It turns out every Crash Bandicoot is canon. Yes, you heard me right. Each and every single one is now canon. Let's talk about it. Whoa! What's up guys, Canadian Gaia here and back with another Crash Bandicoot 4 video. So even though this is a more of a generalized Crash Bandicoot video than exactly Crash Bandicoot 4, it's Crash Bandicoot 4 that brought this to light. So Crash 4, though is exciting, has caused some questions about its story, especially because of its name, Crash Bandicoot 4. Now, I was given this information that the game would be called Crash 4 before I did my interview with Toys for Bob's creative director, Paul Yan. Leading into the interview, I had so many questions, and one of them was how would the games that came out post Naughty Dog were going to work into the story, if at all. Now, many Crash Bandicoot fans have fought tooth and nail over this. If you've ever visited Reddit, YouTube comment sections, forums, Discord servers, you name it, and you talk about what is canon and what's not, it just becomes an outright war. Crash 1, 2, and 3 has always been seen as the golden standard by many people. Most people don't debate how good the original trilogy is. The war begins when you talk about the Wrath of Cortex and beyond. There are debates within debates, within more debates. Some argue that Wrath of Cortex was just so poorly executed that it shouldn't be seen as canon. I mean, Cortex was banished to a distant planet as a baby, how would he ever get back? However, others believe that this is the actual Crash Bandicoot 4. Twin Sanity had fantastic writing, but once again, missed the mark when it came to executing a fully functioning game. Again though, this game is also a cult classic to some and even consider it as the best Crash Bandicoot game of all time. Then you got Crash Tag Team Racing. Is this even canon? Is it a spin-off like CTR and Nitro Kart? Or is it even a mainline game? Could CTR and Nitro Kart even be canon? Then you got Crash of the Titans and Mind Over Mutant, which again, people argue. Is this a reboot? Is this a continuation? They did alter the origins of Crash slightly in the beginning, as well as adding new characters, but then refer to events that happened in previous games. And don't get me started on the arguing that happens when it comes to the characters' designs like Crash, Uka Uka, and Crunch. Some think that only the original three are canon. Some think everything up to Twin Sanity is canon. And some think Crash of the Titans is the reboot and the new canon. Ugh, it makes my head hurt when you think about it. But let's give everyone even more of a headache. What about the racing spin-offs like CTR and Nitro Kart? What about the games that came out on the Nintendo portable consoles like Crash Bandicoot the Huge Adventure and Crash Bandicoot 2 Entrance? What about Crash Bash? What about Crash Purple? Ugh, it's all confusing. But when you thought that there couldn't be any more debates, any more arguing about who is canon and what isn't canon, the Insane Trilogy came out and it made yet another debate. Except this time, it was fairly crystal clear what the options were. When we were hearing that the Insane Trilogy was performing fantastically, people assumed and expected that a new Crash game would be coming in the future. And so, the standoff began. What would the new Crash game be? Would it continue from what is considered the quote-unquote golden era of the franchise and continue where 3 left off? Would it continue from Twin Sanity? Or would it continue from Mind Over Mutant? Or would it yet be another reboot to the franchise? Then, on that fateful day, on June 22nd, 2020, the day Crash fans waited for with bated breath, we found out that the next game would be called Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. Automatically, those who thought that only the original games were considered canon jumped for joy. The games that they considered to be quote unquote mistakes in Crash's past has been erased, retconned, completely removed. Fans of any of the games past warped felt confused. Would all five of those games that came after just be removed entirely? Just on a whim? Like that? It turns out, not so much. Pulling directly from the fact sheet that Activision had sent over to me, this is the basic plot and storyline of Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time. Finally, Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time is the first original entry in the Crash franchise in more than 10 years and the long-awaited sequel to the original trilogy. Rewinding time back to the end of Crash Bandicoot Warped, Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time picks up after Dr. Neo Cortex, Dr. Entropy, and Uka Uka were last stranded on a distant planet. 
After decades of fruitless attempts, the trio finally make their escape, ripping an evil scientist-sized hole in the fabric of space and time in the process. Now all that stands between them and total domination over the multiverse are two fuzzy marsupials from Insanity Island. There is a very, very, very big keyword here. That word is multiverse. But what exactly is a multiverse? Here is a Wikipedia definition. The multiverse is a hypothetical group of multiple universes. Together, these universes comprise everything that exists. The entirety of space, time, matter, energy, information, and the physical laws and constants that describe them. The different universes within the multiverse are called parallel universes, other universes, alternative universes, or many worlds. So, that means there are other universes within the same space, but in a different dimension or timeline. Okay, cool. So what does that have to do with who and what is canon with the Crash Bandicoot franchise? Well, this is where things get interesting. Recently, I was able to have an interview with the creative director of Crash Bandicoot 4, Toys for Bob's Paul Yan. Now, I knew it was called Crash Bandicoot 4 going into the interview, so I was dying to know, what about the games that came after? Was this a reboot? Was it all flushed down the drain? And this is the answer I got from Paul. I mean, technically, this is the eighth game in the line, but we are very deliberately calling this Crash 4. There is something really special about those original games and it was definitely a high point in the series, both critically and commercially. For us, chronologically, that's where the events pick up. But this game is called Crash 4. It's about time. And there are multiple timelines in this multiverse. And the events that happen after Crash Warped, they did happen, but they may have happened in other alternative timelines that may be reflected in some subtle ways in this. But this is a game that just picked up right after Crash 3 Warped. So we're going to see Uka Uka. Entropy and Neocortex, just recently emerging from the planet that they were banished on. This is huge. Every single Crash Bandicoot game is now considered as canon. Each and every single one. Crash Wrath of Cortex, canon. Crash to Insanity, canon. Crash Tag Team Racing, canon. Crash of the Titans and Mind Over Newton, yep, canon and canon. All Crash games are canon, but each one takes place in a different universe within the multiverse that Cortex, Entropy, and Uka Uka ripped apart. So not only does that mean that each and every single Crash game is canon, but because of this multiverse rip, references and even interactions can be made between the Crash characters, meaning we could see multiple Crash Bandicoots, multiple Cocos, multiple Cortexes, and multiple, well, whomevers, all from different dimensions that we know and don't know. So that means that Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time is the true sequel to the original trilogy and Wrath of Cortex is just a separate timeline, right? Wrong. In the PlayStation description of the game, where they give a synopsis, it says, quote, Neo Cortex and Entropy are back at it again and launching an all-out assault on not just this universe, but the entire multiverse. Crash and Coco are here to save the day by reuniting the four quantum masks and bending the rules of reality. New abilities? Check. More playable characters? Yep. Alternative dimensions? Obviously. Redonkulous bosses? For sure. Same awesome sauce? You bet your sweet jorts. Wait, are they actually jorts? Not in this universe. That last line is key. Wait, are they actually jorts? Not in this universe. The original Crash from the original trilogy has been known to be wearing jorts, which is cleared up in future versions of Crash, when this multiverse concept wasn't created yet. But when they say, not in this universe, this means that yes, this is a new timeline and a new crash. This means that the events that happened in Crash 1, 2, and 3 in the original timeline either happen exactly the same in this new timeline or very close to being the same. In Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time. But when Cortex was sent to the new plant with Uka Uka and Entropy, somehow something different happened that allowed Cortex to discover a way to rip a hole in the multiverse, which apparently didn't happen in the original timeline. So at the moment, I have three timelines with possibly a fourth that are confirmed. 
the Mojo timeline, which is the Crash of the Titans games, the original timeline, which is the three games made by Naughty Dog, the new timeline, which Crash Bandicoot 4 fits into, and what I'm tentatively calling the Wrath timeline. Over the coming weeks, I'm going to be doing a bunch of research going over all the different games and all the different events that happen to place each game in each timeline. So make sure to be subscribed because it's going to be an interesting ride. A huge thank you to all those who support the channel through Patreon and being a sponsor on the channel. If you'd like to help it out, check out the links in the description below where you can buy some CGE merch or become a Patreon. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe for more gaming and nostalgic content. Thank you so much everyone and I'll see you guys in the next video.